could you turn off the lights, please? Turn off the light. Turn off the light. Fly, fly, fly me down, down, and down, down. when we down, redo that room, all my dreams. Just, I, I thought maybe if we were back closer towards this, we'd be able to see better. I just want to be able to see the cool background that we put it uh, that I put together. But you know what? What a what a waste because you can't see it. I hate it. Down here. I love the way I hate that, it more so because I just hate having to crawl I around it. I just love the way that it looks, but you can't even see it. So what's the purpose? I don't know. We're gonna have to do something because it's just boring with just those little shelves. Is this thing on? Did you wake me up? I knew you were gonna do that. Did you rub my lamp? Did, did you bring me here? I feel like I said it out of you order. You way screwed that up. Well, how is it then, Jack? Did you rub my lamp? Did you wake me yeah. up? Did you bring me here after 10,000 years? I feel like years, we screwed it up. It gives you such a crick in the neck. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Ooh, Jeff ain't got no hairs left. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gaming. Things. Exactly. I, sometimes when I make my chair too high and I'm too much taller than you, it makes me look I love like how a every giant. time you're like, are you ready? And then you're the one that's never ready. Never ready. Jeff, are you ready? We're here to do another board game snapshot. Baja! 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 Just so you all know, if you are interested, which you totally should be, Jeff and I now also stream on Twitch. And anytime somebody subscribes on Twitch, it goes, Baja! And then in the background, it echoes for us, so we go, here, we hear, Baja! 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 It's great. It's a bit obnoxious. It's awesome. We are here to do another episode of Board Game Snapshots, which is an episode where we do five mini board game reviews. So we have five board games here for you. Where did the fifth one go? Where did you put Power Plant? Oh, sneaky, sneaky. We have five board games to talk about, so let's jump in. Just to get started, all five of these games were sent to us for review. So I don't need to say it? That's just a blanket statement. All five sent for review. There we said it. I said it two times. Two times. Two moons have passed. I knew you were going to say that too because I almost said it. Jeff thinks he oh, always knows what I'm going to say. I do. You have the same sayings and same I got responses my to... Yeah, you do. There's certain words that trigger things in you my head. You 100% do. First up... It's not the full box because it's too heavy and... The rest of it's in here. And we're currently pl 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 play playing it. Oh, yeah. That is Osworn Into the Deepwood from Shadowborn Games. And let me tell you... Into the thick of it. About a little game called Oathsworn. Oathsworn is a campaign-based narrative story with a skirmish component attached to it. So ultimately, in this game, the first half of each session is going to be you and your companions, your free company, exploring the town of Bastogne. Ours is called the Fellowship. We are the Fellowship. Going around town, um, going to different locations to uncover secrets, story, milestones, uh, items, information, items, etc., etc. Et and then... There's a time track. So the longer that you do that, the less effective you're going to be or the less bonuses you will get during the next part of the session, which is the encounter, which is the majority of, of each session would be the encounter. Yeah. And the encounter is basically the skirmish part portion of the game, which is the boss battle. Boss essentially. battle. And each scenario has a different boss. Any B-roll you see is from the very first scenario. Yeah. And which is in the book. In the book. So not a spoiler. Depending on how much time you spend in town collecting information, you are putting tokens on the time track. It could cover up bonuses that you could have gotten during the encounter. Yep. So if you're more efficient in town, you will have some bonuses to help you out via the encounter. Yeah. But it's also interesting because... If you're too uh, efficient. If you're too efficient, then yeah, you might... <laughs> There's a nice balance there. Yeah. But ultimately, what I also think is really, really interesting, one more thing I want to highlight in this game, is... Depending on the paths you go down, there's a path A, path B, depending on certain things that you do, like maybe the encounter at the very end, uh, you get ambushed, or maybe you ambush the boss, and that will give you different other perks, which I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. And actually, one more last thing, because I'm gushing about this a bit longer than I should be. What's really cool is the bosses have different 
parts of their body that you have to hit. Yeah. And those different body parts could have different attacks that the boss can do. So if you actually damage its mouth, for example, it's going to eliminate some effectiveness of its mouth attack, Can't like bite a bite you. or whatever. Mouth or if you, attack. if you cut off its tail, it's not going to be able to do certain tail attacks. Whip it's a attack. really, really, really cool way to do a skirmish okay. boss battler. I am absolutely enthralled with this game. Jeff like, loves it. I adore this game mm -hmm. so much. And I kind of figured I would. Everyone that had played it, that had told us about it, had said, you're going to love this game. And they were all 100% correct. We are currently two scenarios in. Yeah, so we're probably going to have to come back at a later time to give an update after we've gone through more. We are using the app. I should mention We're using that. the app. Um, there, you don't have to use the app. There is a storybook you can go through, but I just prefer the app narration. It's a good point, though. The app is only there for the story and not the encounter. So essentially, it's just reading you the story. It doesn't control yeah. the fights or anything. I know a lot of people are curious, probably, like, how does this compare to Gloomhaven? Mm -hmm. It's got some similarities, but besides the fact that it's kind of like a big campaign game that uses cards with miniatures and stuff. I don't really think there's a ton too many similarities. It's got a really cool cooldown mechanic with the cards. So you, like you play out a card on your turn, you have to play animus, like little gems. So you're continuing on in a round until you run out of gems. Your cards go into a cooldown. You don't get them back into your it's hand until you battle flow them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's really interesting. There's some mechanics in this game I haven't really experienced in other campaign games like this. Mm -hmm. I would say it sways so far heavily towards the encounters. Yes. Right now, anyway. I don't know how that continues for the scenarios, but... I yeah. have died every time. Mm -hmm. Yet, as I mentioned, we're the Fellowship. Yep. My brother Jason is playing a bear, and his name is Frodo Bergens. His name is Frodo Bergens. All right, next up, we have Retrograde. This is from Resonim Games, and this... Well, I didn't... I already, I didn't we already said it. Said, sent to us for review. This is a very interesting roll and write game that is essentially like an old-school, like, droid arcade game. It's uh, Galaga. It's droid... Galaga. 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 Basically, you are rolling dice, and it is a bit of a real-time element. So you're rolling dice at the same time, trying to get two matching symbols. When you get two matching colors, then you get to cross off one of those little droidy things. So you keep yeah. rolling until you are satisfied with your roll, and then everybody else gets to keep rolling. But if you're already done, you could be like, stop and they might not have the role that they want but you get to dictate that because you are quick and mm -hmm. once you stop rolling you get to grab one of the objective or scoring cards from the center of the table which allows you then to cross off the droid so not only do you need to have two of the same color you also need to have a scoring card that has the matching color droid as well those different scoring cards also have other things it might be a one-time use effect it might be a coin which you can use to do different things so there's other benefits that come along with those cards. And essentially, you are just trying to get rows and... I always do that. Columns and rows. It's like rows with the and columns. Dice roll. Yeah, but I always say row and then I do this. That's a column. That's true. It's like <laughs> your rights and lefts. Exactly. I can't get that either. I think it's a very uh, accessible roll in Scratch. Well, oh, scratch. Yeah, because you're just crossing things off. It's a roll and write. It's not super combo rific. Mm -mm. Uh, I would not. I would class, classify this as a very lightweight. Yeah, I would say this is a very good, like, if you know someone that's not super into board games, but maybe... They're into Astro Droids. They, they're familiar with, like, the old Galaga games or, or like this aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a really good one to bring to the table and say, hey, do you want to try this game out? And that is Retrograde. Retrograde. Yeah. Next up, very exciting, we have Bamboo from Devere Games. You may recognize this from one of my most anticipated games from 2023. Indeed. I was... So happy when this package showed up along with Savernac Forest, which we have talked about a little bit in some previous videos. Yep. Bamboo is part of the like Batoku Silk world. So it's kind of like a series of games, basically. Mm -hmm. What you're doing in this game is you are taking little pieces of bamboo and you are assigning them to areas on your board. And when you do that and you choose to use them, you then get to use that color bamboo or that symbol bamboo's 
action. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different actions on the board. As an example, one of them is you're kind of organizing your home. Another one is you're collecting food. Another one is that you're engaging with the spirits. Mm -hmm. And there's a few different things that you can do and a lot of them like kind of interact with each other. Once you get to the end of the round, as an example, you need to be able to feed your family, which generally I know. I was people, just going to say, for how much Jamie has poo-pooed on feeding it's games. It's my least favorite part about this game. I don't think that, you know, that's too much like real life. Let's not do that. Anyways, that is part of it. So you kind of have to consider how many items and things you're putting into your home because for every item you have, you need to be able to provide a piece of food for that. Mm -hmm. You're also going to be collecting these little uh, scoring objectives for how you place things in your home. Like you might want a tr something that has a tree symbol next to a sandal symbol. Like it's they're symbols basically, but they have like other things on them. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you score the points and then you get to get more objectives. There's a lot of game. There's a lot. In this little box. It's wild. It's actually incredibly impressive yep. what they've done in this box and this small of a game mm -hmm. in terms of strategy and combos. Like for how much stuff is in here, it is hard to describe in a quick little like video like this. Totally. Because there's so many key elements to this game that all intertwine together. Yep. Like, again, like Jamie mentioned, you have your little house that you need to build out with different little components that need to match depending on your objectives. Mm -hmm. I very much enjoyed this game. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's so cute. It's actually very, very, very good. It wasn't one that I was, like, super excited for. It's just not my aesthetic. It's mm -hmm. more Jamie's. And I'm so glad that she was interested in it because I actually loved it. Mm -hmm. It is combo city combo city there's so many little things you have to think about in order to optimize your strategy yeah one and, thing i um, did want to mention before i forget the bamboo is really really important in this game and the really interesting mechanic is once you spend bamboo from your board it goes back onto the main board at the bottom of a bamboo stock and then when you use the action that's printed on the bamboo, you push it up and that's how you gain new bamboo into mm -hmm. your home. So there's also a bit of strategy there because like where you place your little pieces of bamboo, then you know like, okay, well I need blue. So I'm going to have to place it here and I'm going to have to place this one here and I'm going to have to trigger this ability so that I can get these pieces there's, of bamboo. There's a bunch of planning mm -hmm. that has to happen in this. And you're not just planning for the turn that's coming up. You're planning for that turn and like two turns ahead. And it is incredible. Incredibly beautiful. It's so cute. It's adorable. I actually, I love feeding in games. I mean, Agricola is one of my favorite games. And I really, really enjoyed it in this because it's constantly a thing you have to think about underlying the entirety of the other game. It's like a game in itself. Mm -hmm. Making sure you're paying attention to that element. I yeah. very much enjoyed this. And that is Bamboo. Next up from KTBG, we have Power Plants. It's on upside down. Classic. That's the way it wants to stay. That looks like a Jawa. A little bit. Yeah! Doesn't it? Yeah. Next up from KTBG, we have Power Plants. Power Plants is a abstract? Now, there's a theme. You are building out... A patch. Patches. But, like, what type of game is it? With a wizard. Power Plants is a tile placement area majority game. Mm -hmm. where you are building out a bunch of different patches of... They're different plants. Plants. And all of those plants have special abilities. And depending on... Uh, so there's a wizard that's on the patch that you're going to move around on the board. And depending on if the wizard is in the location or around the location, it'll trigger different abilities of Choose those. to sprout or grow. Sprout or grow. Mm -hmm. And if you choose to sprout or grow, it's going to do different actions yeah. depending on the type of patch you're putting out. What you're trying to do is get a bunch of your sprites onto these patches because at the end game, you're going to score sprites. You're scoring for the majority that you control of the patches with your sprites. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds confusing. It's but it's not. not. But it sounds confusing. All I'm trying to say is by end game, you want to have a bunch of sprites out on the board and those sprites can be moved. They can be taken off by your opponent. It's a bit mean. Definitely it's mean. Definitely a mean element. We've only played it at two. I don't know how it would play at a higher count. It would be absolutely bonkers 
at a higher player count. Yeah, there's a ton of variety within this game. So when you start the game, you choose certain types of plants mm -hmm. and you get to kind of pick and choose. Each of them has different grow abilities and sprout abilities. Then on each flip side, there's like a variation of that plant that's a little bit like darker. Of course there is a theme, but it is kind of very abstract in the way that it actually plays. I really liked it. I thought that it was different and it's so colorful. Our, our copy of this has like, I don't know if every copy has these, I'm assuming, but it's like w the tiles are wooden. Mm -hmm. It's very tactile feeling. It's very colorful, colorful and, and, fun and, and, and beautiful bright. and bright. And I do mm -hmm. think it would play super well for kids at a certain age. I just love the way kids table board gaming board games look. I just love it. Like now we've got a nice little shelf of them and they just look so good. Jamie was gushing the entire time we were playing this about that fact. It's so colorful and bright and fun. Like I, this is one of those games that I do think if it's sitting out on the table and someone sees it, they might yeah. be like, yeah, yeah. what are you playing? You, you, you would see this game from afar yeah. ways away. It's it is neat. super colorful. It has... And like the colors are like, like almost kind of like neon. Yeah, that's power plants. That is power plants from KTBG. KTBG. Last but not least, we have my little Everdell. I needed to say it with that cute little voice because this box lives on upside down. I know Jeff's gonna want to fix it. <sighs> you do this to yourself. I didn't do it. I might have done it. My little Everdell. I say it in that voice because this is an even cuter version of Everdell. Where Can I jump in quick? Yeah. I'm not one to get suckered in by cute, but my god. It is this game adorable. Is it might be the most adorable thing I've ever seen. So this is essentially a condensed version of Everdell that was made to be more accessible for young children. It says six plus. Just to be transparent, Jeff and I know nothing about children. I don't know if that if six year olds could play this. I will just assume that they can. It felt a little bit too combo y for someone that young. I think there might be even like there are more simple rules okay. in this as well. Fair like enough. we didn't play with like the captain or the fort cards, which mm. makes it which they recommend if you're playing with little little okay, kids. Okay, 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 cool. So basically in this game you have your board out. You are you've got your little friends, they're called. You got a character with friends, and you are putting them out on the board, you're gathering resources and you are then playing a card from the main board, which essentially means you're taking that card and putting it into your little home play area. The cards are going to be either host cards or critter cards, and then each of those has a type. Green, red, purple, blue, tan, and that might be it which means that they all do slightly different things. So your green cards are going to produce resources, your red cards are going to create more worker placement spots, your tan cards give you an instant action, purple or end game scoring, etc., etc. That's it, you're going back and forth, you're gathering your resources, you are playing a card. Gathering resources, playing a card. You roll dice at the beginning of it in order to set certain resources out on the board, but at the end of the day, you're just trying to get the most points possible. I will say we played this at two and I did play it solo and it has a very cute, cozy, relaxing solo variant that I very much so enjoyed. I think it's something even as a 30 plus year old adult that I could sit down and just like have a coffee and play this like it's very cute. I loved it. It's a very uh, accessible, quicker way to play Everdell. Yeah. I mean, it's designed, I think, for younger kids to get into games and into the Everdell world. But mm -hmm. I mean, as someone that's played Everdell and that big tree set up and all of these different things, like if you love Everdell and you're like, man, I wish I could play this super quick, like this is it. This is giving you, doesn't have the tree, doesn't have all the fluff around it. It's mm -hmm. basically like, here's some cards build a combo, get more resources to build that engine yeah. to get some end game scoring cards. Yes. And that's it. And there are also, I forgot to mention, tiles called parades, which are also mm. like objectives you're trying to reach. So one of them might be the first to get to five critters gets six extra points. Mm -hmm. The second person to get to five critters gets X amount of points and whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's another element. Now I do think like, once again, if you're playing with little, little kids, you don't need to play with the parade tiles. No. 
but if you're helping them, you probably could. Mm -hmm. The artwork. It's adorable. Literally every card. I, mean, I was just sitting there. I was picking cards even though I didn't need them because I wanted them because they were cute. There's a turtle that's called Old something. Old guy or old turtle. <laughs> I don't know what it's it is. It's not either of those things. <laughs> it's really, really cute. Anyways, I personally really enjoyed this. Like for what it is, it's it's just such a cute, 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 cute. Yeah, I mean, I, I shockingly, uh, shockingly to myself, yeah. uh, also very much enjoyed this, which is interesting because Everdell is a game that I haven't enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I mean, mind you, we played it super early on in our journey into this space, and I mm -hmm. haven't played it since. No, nothing bad about the game. I just yeah. felt like it didn't deliver for me personally. But then I, so then I played this, and I was like, I don't know, but I really enjoyed it. It's it was of the old guy turtle. It it played super fast. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm starting to get more in tune with those games that you can set up and just play in 30 minutes and you're done. Jeff had one gripe. As a as an oh, adult yeah. human, it uh, comes with little resource boxes. You probably can't tell, but um, I actually have very large hands. Like. I have large for, hands. For also a for a, a man that is not, I am not tall. But for some reason, I have ginormous hands. Yeah, Jeff couldn't get and his I could not <laughs> get the resources out because they have the they out. come with little containers basically that yeah. are thematic to the game, and I could not. I could not. He eventually, get them out. what you can do is just tip them out. That's what he ended yeah. up doing. That was, but that's. I mean, I'm not a child. <laughs> You're not a child, exactly. Yeah, so. um, I did want to say as well, it does come with a promo pack of cards that you can play in regular Everdell as well. Mm. It adds kindergartners to the game. and Cute. <laughs> and all the resources are like the same as Everdell. The same. Like yeah, you the squishy same berries. squishy berries and all of that yeah, stuff. So. You'll love to see it. Anyways, yeah. that is my lol Everdell. It's very good. It's so cute. Yeah. Anyways, those are five more games that we have been playing and our thoughts on them. Would love to know down below if you played any of these games. What do you think? Are there any that you're excited to play? You know, tell us. And you want to know what else? Do you like to eat snacks? I freaking do. I do too. And I also enjoy eating snacks from around the world. And that's why we enjoy Munch Pack. <laughs> you know what's funny? We will go to the U.S. And when we're in, every time we're in the U.S., we always go to the grocery store and be like, all right. Let's well, get what some can we snacks. Get here? What, yeah. What's some special stuff we can get? Yeah. So, so stay tuned for our monthly wrap up. We're actually going to be trying some snacks from around the world as we talk about board games. It's I'm be so great. pumped for that. Do you know what else is a good thing to do? Is buying games from your friendly local gaming store. It is. And for us, that is the boardroom game cafe. Yes, it is. I was gonna. Do we get any of these games from? Nope. nope these are all sent. These to are us. all sent to us. We already said that. We've dated. But I bet you can find them there. You probably could. Most of them. If you like what you see. Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. Maybe we'll need to put like a plant I think here. you can just put a plant there. And maybe like a lamp on your side or something. For a little drama in the back. Do you know what would be cool? Right here. Yep. Do you know those like lanterns you can get? Yeah. Okay. I the found one. The old timey one. lanterns. I found one. That just... Connect to the wall? Yeah. I found one that it's like, it looks like a crow and it's holding like a light bulb hanging and it's like sitting on a perch and it like kind of looks like this, but the light bulb's hanging from its mouth. It's pretty neat. It would neat. need to be battery though. <laughs> pretty neat. I couldn't connect it to electrical. Uh, it's a plug. It's a plug-in. But then you'd have a plug hanging down the wall. We out here solving problems. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Are you yeah. ready? Yep. Yeah. Are we recording? I'm next. Everybody's shaving their head. Not me. I got a weird shaped head. People are going to be like, why'd you shave your head? I'm thinning. Feel my head. Age has caught up with me, and I wasn't going bald. I was just going to shave. What? No, like this. Look. Give me these fingers. What is that? It's like I got a lid that wasn't big it's, enough. It's like you got hit in the head and there's a dent. But it's the whole way around. I don't know. I got an edge. I right, got an go. edge. Anyways, left is a loser. Loser. That's correct. Yeah. Anyways, you go, I go. You go, I go. If you go again, then it'll be me, and then the last one will be you. Okay.